حياكم في برنامج سيارات نادرة Limited Edition هذا البرنامج بنغوص في عالم السيارات لكن مو بأي سيارات اسمي سعيد العلي أحب المغامرات والسفر حول العالم واكتشف أشياء جديدة حولي كل يوم لكن شغفي الأكبر اللي ما يوقف هو عالم السيارات الساحر وتحديدا السيارات الكلاسيكية هاي التحف الفنية النادرة ولهذا السبب راح أقابل ناس من أهم جامعي السيارات الكلاسيكية والنادرة وأشخاص لهم بصمة مميزة وكبيرة في عالم السيارات فخلوكم وياي عشان نتعرف عليهم ونشاركهم هذا الشغف So our guest today is a very special guest. He is not only a car collector, but he's an author and he's a banker by profession. Let's meet today Mr. Mohammed Lekman. Thank you, Sayed. How are you, thank sir? You for, How are you doing? Thank you for having me, Sayed. Uh, thank you for sharing with us your information and your uh, researches that you've spent a lot of time researching and doing. Pleasure is mine, I would say. I was born in Hyderabad, and that's a southern part of India, that is. Uh, it's a city known for the Nizams of Hyderabad. They were the premier rulers uh, you know, uh, during the colonial times, colonial times, that is. I had my education back in Hyderabad. Uh, I did my schooling there. After that, obviously, I went on to do my, my bachelor's, which was a BCom, and mm -hmm. then I did my master's uh, in MBA, that is, uh, in mm -hmm. business administration. And uh, alongside, I also had a, a degree, a postgraduate degree in, in commerce, which is a master of commerce. Mm -hmm. So I had a double postgraduate degree. Yeah. And then there was something else that I wanted to do in life, uh, which was uh, pursue a, a passion for motoring. How did it start, even though you did not study engineering or automobiles in general. Exactly. Well, I tell you what, uh, this is because, uh, because of the exposure that I had to motor cars at a very young age. Now, uh, my mother's mother, that's my maternal you know, grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, she had uh, a range of motor cars. And the one I clearly remember spending much time in, you know, driving around town with her as a little boy, uh, was an Austin 8. She had an Austin mm -hmm. 8. So, you see how we remember things when you're yeah. a little child. Things get registered at the back of your head. Mm -hmm. So it had a registration called APX2007. Okay. Uh, by the way, I've just recently bought a similar Austin 8. Okay. <laughs> just I, because uh, of that bond uh, with so, your so, grandma. Exactly, exactly. So I want to hand it on to one of my children. I've, I've got three sons and a daughter. Nice. So I've always been on a lookout for motor cars to hand over to, you know, at least a motor car to each of them. Mm -hmm. And then on the, uh, my mother's paternal side, mm -hmm. uh, her paternal grandmother, Mm -hmm. uh, she had, uh, uh, so she had this motor car, uh, it was a Fiat 514. Mm -hmm. That caught my fancy, you know, when I was young, I always used to see it, you know, from, from our, our window, and it would be, you know, uh, driven in, in the building, and, you know, mm -hmm. as it would go into the car park, come yeah. out of the car park, you know, we, I would just keep a, you know, a track of, you know, the track movement, of, yeah, movement of the movements, the exactly. So I think, uh, you know, that's, the, the, these are the, you know, two images that I still have. I started having my own motor cars, and we built up a small collection. Uh, mm -hmm. My cars are very ordinary, they're not by any chance, you know, super luxury cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. But these are all vintage and classic cars. Mm -hmm. you know, cars I'm passionate about, cars I've yeah. spent time on, and, you know, cars I've grown with. Most of car collectors, or almost every car collector, they search for cars that exist, for cars they can own. Uh, but what you are doing is a little bit different. You don't only, uh, you are not only collecting cars, but you actually collect information about cars that was owned by uh, kings and by queens and uh, sheikhs. So tell me a little bit about that. Where did that come from? Apart from cars, if there was something that was of interest to me, right from the beginning, was history. Mm -hmm. So I've always been interested in history, discovering things, you know, artifacts, you know, 
anything that's old mm -hmm. and you know probing you know probing into the past so uh, well this is something my wife keeps telling me as well so you are more of a person who dwells in the past than, yeah. <laughs> than remaining in the present so she keeps telling me this as well so when we look out for a car people go for, for design aspects of the car mm -hmm. or for the limited edition out here in the Middle East right there yeah. were only 10 made or 100 made so they go after that my desire has always been to go after cars which have provenance mm -hmm. so which is history and you call it pedigree yeah. So if you have a royal pedigree or a provenance you know, with car owned by an interesting person, that is a car that you know, tickles my bone, as they say. You know? mm -hmm. And then more importantly, what's important here is that you have cars, you have special cars, you have important cars. Above everything is state motor cars. Mm -hmm. A state motor car is something that is owned by the state yeah. and the ruler. The ruler pays for it or the president or the country, whatever. Yeah. So the country is paying for it and it is owned by the country. And not just the, the ruler himself. The person himself. Exactly. Yeah. And the ruler obviously, you know, uh, is succeeded by another ruler, he's mm -hmm. succeeded by another ruler, yeah, so the yeah. car remains. It remains. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's why a state car is very important. So the first book I wrote was on the automobiles of the Nizams. Mm -hmm. And Nizams were the prominent, the premier rulers of India. India was ruled by hundreds of princes, you know, back in the colonial days yeah. and the days before, you know, the, uh, the English arrived. Uh, Nizams were the leading rulers and uh, the biggest state in India they ruled and they were the wealthiest, the richest. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I approached the royal family uh, and, uh, you know, very, they very graciously agreed mm -hmm. and they gave me the permission to study the archives. Mm -hmm. uh, I was given access to that and then I went, studied in, you know, exhaustive detail. I looked through, you know, uh, documents, photographs and invoices, you know, order mm -hmm. sheets, bill sheets, you know, these are hundreds of years old, you know, at least of, over a century old at times. Yeah. Here is a book uh, which, which, which mm -hmm. I can show you. So it's yes. called Automobiles of the Nizams, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so there you have the Nizams. So these are some of the motor cars you see on the cover, as uh -huh. you can see. This was a Daimler ordered uh -huh. by the, the sixth Nizam, right? And uh, then this is the Napier. Mm -hmm. ordered by this Nizam, six Nizam, and he had, uh, he was the greatest customer for Napier. Mm -hmm. Napier was a motor car far greater than Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce, yeah. you know, was not even on the scene. Yeah. So Napier yeah. was that, that big. Right. And this is the famous, uh, the Throne Silver Ghost. Uh -huh. This is chassis 2117. Nice. And there's a book that I'm writing on that. It's uh -huh. a very famous Rolls-Royce in the world. Nice. And this was, again, this was ordered by him. But by the time this Rolls Royce was delivered, well, delivered. Yeah, he, he passed, he passed away. So, away, yeah. And then he, it was given to his son. You know, uh -huh. he, he took the delivery of that. Fifty-five years ago, there was a car that have uh, that got uploaded on the Arabian Gulf shore, right. and it got lost within time, and you found it somewhere in Europe. Exactly. And uh, as people who lives on this land, we have a great emotional band with this uh, car. Can you tell us a little bit about this car and uh, give us more details about who owned it and? Uh, where is it now and what is happening with it? Right, so this is uh, Sheikh Zayed's Rolls Royce motor car. Allah. Rahim Allah. Allah. So, uh, yeah, so uh, it's actually uh, this first official state motor car which came mm -hmm. to Abu Dhabi. So this is, was the first official state that is registered as it belongs to the state? Exactly, official state motor car, that mm -hmm. is. And it was delivered uh, in 1966. Mm -hmm. It is actually a 1965 car. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the ruler of Abu Dhabi at the time was His Highness Sheikh Sheikh Boot. Sheikh Boot. Yeah. And uh, Sheikh Sheikh Booth had the car for about six months. He used mm -hmm. it. And then after that, he was succeeded by his young and dynamic brother, you know, yeah. much loved, uh, His Highness Sheikh Zayed. And uh, so His Highness Sheikh Zayed used the car for very long. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in state service. It was used at very important occasions. Uh, the car is actually integral to the history of the country. Mm -hmm. And it is in this particular motor car, reportedly, that uh, Sheikh Zayed went to sign the treaty, uh, or, you know, of unification and uh, the federation yeah. formation uh, oh, with the, his Highness uh, Sheikh uh, Rashid. Yes, you know, uh, it's very interesting. I would like to show you how I found it. Yes. So, yeah. so I, uh, I, I was actually doing a research. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a year of Zayed, 2018. Okay. So in 2018, I wanted to do a book. Uh, uh, I was living in Abu Dhabi for eight years then. Mm -hmm. right? So I said, I mean, let me do something for Abu Dhabi. So yeah. I thought, okay, let's write a book. Uh, on the motor cars of uh, Sheikh, Zayed. Sheikh Zayed. Now, when I was researching, I was going through this book, Memoirs of the Emirates. So, as you can see, this is the Memoirs of the Emirates, yes. right? A very interesting book uh, brought together by, by the, National uh, Archives, National published Archives. by National Archives. So, at the National Archives, you know, I had a look into the book. I was just researching. And while researching, on page 333, I remember the page very clearly, I found an interesting photograph. There it is. Can you mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. So this is the photograph that started it all. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. So like, with, yeah. <laughs> because of this uh, exactly, photograph, yeah. you started to the look search. for the car. Exactly. So it says Rolls Royce for the ruler mm -hmm. being unpacked uh, on GM landing, GM landing aircraft. Circa 1960, it says. Nice. Right. right? Yeah. So now I, I said to myself, first of all, it's a right hand drive car. Right. Yeah. What is a right hand drive car doing you know, uh, <laughs> in a left hand drive yes. right? <laughs> arena? So that's what I looked at. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, hold on a minute, you know, let me find out. And then it just says ruler, right? Yeah, it and didn't I, say it's a which ruler. Yeah? Yeah. So it could be the ruler of Dubai or uh, Sharjah, Sharjah or Abu Dhabi, or, yes. anything. So, yeah, and then I, you know, mobilized all my contacts that I've been, you know, developing all through these years. Yes, right? yeah. My friends in Europe and in the West, right? Uh, we saw Dubai, there was no, no Rolls Royce delivered to Dubai in the 1950s, mm -hmm. 60s. So we said it couldn't be Dubai. Uh, no delivered, none delivered to Sharjah. So yeah. we said it will have to be Abu Dhabi, right? Yeah. And then we looked into the records and found it was uh, chassis 5 VE15. And the engine number is E7PV. That's the moment we said, okay, this is, you know, Sheikh Zayed's car. Mm -hmm. And then, then there was a question of finding where the car is now at the moment, yeah. right? Whether it exists or it's, you know, lost. Because it was considered long lost, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, and... Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I mean, through contacts, you know, I've somehow reached uh, the, uh, the gentleman who owned this car. Much mm -hmm. to our surprise, the car was surviving in yes. Europe. And it was surviving in a quaint suburb of uh, Vienna, Austria, just outside Austria. Austria. And in its life, it was used as a wedding limousine, would you believe it? So, ah, really? It <laughs> yeah. was used as a wedding limousine? <laughs> yes, yes, it was. And uh, it was sold, uh, you know, a couple of times with, you know, not many people knowing who the car belonged to. And then, yeah, uh, I got to the owner. I finally reached him. I mm -hmm. approached him. I said, I want to know about the car. So he said, uh, first, of, first of all, there was a lot of reluctance on his part to share yeah. any information. He was not, uh, saying, uh, you know, very welcoming. Mm -hmm. But uh, as time progressed, I pursued him, you know, yeah. uh, you know I yeah, yeah, persuaded him further and then, uh, yeah, and then he finally relented and he started talking to me. And then we got into an agreement, right? And then the car was eventually acquired. And now, as I understood that the car is uh, in the UK, you have moved the car from Vienna to the that's, UK, right? That's right. So the car was acquired and then um, I had transferred the ownership onto someone else. Uh -huh. This person who owns the car is in England. So you didn't yeah. take it under your name at the very Exactly, beginning. that's what it is. Okay. So, so I transferred uh, the papers, although you know, worried my name, yeah. then I started off. So the car was moved by road, by mm -hmm. road. It went in a truck nice. to England. That's where it is. And I curate the car. This person who owns the car now, he's British. Mm -hmm. And I curate the car for him because he wants me to take care of the car. Uh, I discover the car. I know uh, more about the nice. car. So he says, you take care of the car, right? Okay. So I curate the car for him. I mean, my yeah. dream is to bring it back to Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. perhaps display it at the, the Zayed National Museum, you know, yeah. which will be you know, a, a great monument dedicated to you know, his Irish Sheikh Zayed, well, or perhaps at uh, the uh, Qasr al, uh, Watan, Qasr al -Watan. Yeah, the presidential palace. Yes under the central dome, you know, uh, I, I nice. love it. Uh, you, you already <laughs> picture the <laughs> Yes, yeah, uh, I, can, I can visualize that. Yeah. You know, because that's the most important thing, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, it's, it's part of the history of the country. Right. Uh, there was a conference held in 1967 or 69, 69, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Conference of the Nine Emirates. Yeah. In, and nine Emirates included the uh, Qatar and Qatar Bahrain, and Bahrain, yes. Bahrain as well. So they were part of that. So this car was seen parked outside the conference, mm -hmm. and you had the AK-47 AK holding gunmen, security guards, uh -huh. you know, guarding the car. The interesting uh -huh. photograph. I thought this was a culmination of, of a lifelong passion that I've had. Yeah. So this is perhaps the the you know the the highlight of my career. Nice. You know, uh, one of the highlights I would say, where I found um, you know the country's most important motor car. And I feel very fortunate and uh, rather, you know, privileged that I've had, you know, a good chance to, you know, to see the car, to acquire the car, to drive it, test nice. drive it. Uh, it will be shown at different shows this year. It was nice. due to be shown at the British International Concours d'Elegance, which oh, I was nice. curating. But sadly, due to the lockdown in England, the uh, show yeah, was cancelled. Uh, but two other important shows are going ahead mm -hmm. in September. Nice. Uh, it will be shown at the Salon Privé, at mm -hmm. the Blenheim Palace, and at the Hampton Court Palace. Nice. That's what it is. This book, it's, it's called Under the Spotlight. It's a mm -hmm. two-volume book. 
by a good friend of mine, David Basuli. Right. And it tells you about Rolls Royce and Bentley motor cars, yeah, shown at the Earl's Court Show. Close. Between yeah. 1937 to 76. 76. And this was in 1965, in between, mm. right? So you, you get to see that one if you go to this volume two. Yeah. Which one of these? This is the volume two, as you can see on top, yeah? That's the volume two. And uh, yeah, you, you can see, you know, Rolls Royce Bentley motor cars being shown here. So if you go to the 1965 motor show, right? Uh, where is that one? Uh -huh. It's a 1965, 1965 London motor show, motor show, right? At the Earl's Court. Patron, as usual, Her Majesty the Queen, yes. right? And uh, so these are the dates, you know, when it mm -hmm. happened, right? Between 20th to 30th October. Yes. Now, in this motor show, the car was on display. You can read the notes which says no, sold to the ruler of Abu Dhabi Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Hayyan in exactly. January 1966. Right, so 65 you have the motor show, October nice, yeah. 66, right? Soon after the motor show, it is sold. It's sold. Exactly. And then within that, you have all the details. details yeah? It has fine gold coach lines, it was yeah. in black color, uh -huh. right? Seven seater limousine, right? You can see all of these details. And yes. it was on stand number 160. Uh huh. Where so it even, was. Oh, very nice. Very interesting, exactly. And then it tells you everything. It was, you know, it had this electrically operated window division. Nice. It is still there. It has the flagpoles. Yeah, everything. It gives you all the details.